everyone! Bye. Welcome back to another week of Anchors Online. We're excited to be back and we actually have a new song this week with actions again this week. Well actually it's not that new but it's new for us because we <laughs> haven't done it online before. We're sure you know it so yeah. we're gonna head straight into that and you can follow along with the actions and we hope you enjoy it. Cool! song and that you're going to practice all the actions and learn them off by heart. Um, we're into week three now of our superhero series and we're going to look at the first superpower of that superhero this week. We're looking at the superhero superpower over illness. So to start us off Lucy is going to read from Mark chapter 1 verse 40 to 44. Okay, shall I read? Yes, please do. So, as Cassie said, this is from Mark 1, verses 40 to 44. And it says, A man who had a harmful skin disease came to Jesus. The man fell to his knees and begged Jesus, I know that you can heal me if you will. Jesus felt sorry for the man, so he touched him and said, I want to heal you, be healed. At once the disease left the man and he was healed. Jesus told the man to go at once, but Jesus warned him strongly, Don't tell anyone about what I did for you, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer a gift to God because you have been healed. Offer the gift that Moses commanded. This will show the people that you were healed. Thank you for reading, Lucy. Right. What an amazing superpower. Jesus just touched that man and he was instantly healed from his harmful skin disease. What we do need to keep in mind here though is that that harmful skin disease in different translations is just called leprosy which is the official name for that disease and that disease if someone during the time of Jesus had that disease it meant that they were considered unclean and they weren't allowed to go worship God in the temple because they were 
not considered clean and holy, so they weren't allowed to enter and come near to God under the rules that were in place at the time of Jesus. But it also meant that when someone touched that man or anyone else who had that disease, they would then also become unclean. But Jesus, in this passage, turns that around. Jesus touches that man, and instead of Jesus becoming unclean, the man becomes clean and healed because Jesus touched him. And I think that is just so incredible. It is. That's such a cool image because it highlights even more um, how great what Jesus did was because... For most people, the opposite would happen. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Yeah. What do you think the man must have felt like coming to Jesus and asking him to be healed? I think he must have felt so many different things. I think once Jesus had healed him, he probably felt a lot of relief um, and amazement and excitement. I mean, he had, after that, he would have had such, so much more freedom in terms of his social life but also in terms of going um and worshipping God with other people um but I think before that when he actually came to Jesus he must have had so many emotions going on he must have felt um, probably quite a lot of shame because most people didn't want to be near him considered him unclean and wanted him to stay away um um yeah he was an outcast and so I think he would have probably felt shame approaching any person even if it was Jesus Um, And also definitely nervousness, um, wondering what Jesus was going to say. Um, But I guess probably excitement and anticipation as well, because to have asked Jesus that, he must have had an expectation that Jesus would give him what he asked for. Yeah, he must have kind of known that Jesus actually has that ability, that Mm -hmm. superpower to heal him yeah like he couldn't have just gone to anyone I, like he couldn't just have gone to any normal priest and been like please heal me that yeah. wouldn't have happened in that way like other people would have been like you know stay away from me i don't want to become unclean by touching you yeah but jesus actually reaches out and touches him and then he becomes clean and healed mm. it shows the trust and the faithfulness yeah. this man had in jesus And it's similar to how we said um, with the fishermen, actually, how straight away they had this faith in Jesus and they followed him. Um, Yeah, they somehow must have known or had this faith in who he is. Like, they hadn't met him before, but they instantly knew, if anyone can do it, this man can. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, it's just like, he's such an amazing superhero. Like, he has that superpower and... You just see him and you know if anyone can, that he can. (laughs) Yeah, I think so. So I think actually what happened with the leper is a good example of what we can do. In the same way as he went to Jesus for healing then, we can still do that in a sense now. We might not get healed in the same way. We might not necessarily pray. And it might not be like instant healing. Yeah. But there's so many things that we, we do need to be asking Jesus for and we can see um, that Jesus does want to help us he does want to answer our prayers he does want to do the things that we're asking of him yeah. um, if he thinks they're good things um, so yeah it's what I really thing. like is that the man says if you are willing and Jesus said I am willing yeah so it's always this we might want so many things and we might want to have them to all happen instantly but what actually matters is if you are willing lord if you want to do this jesus then do it but not just what i want but what you want should happen yeah and i think because jesus does want what's best for us and in this situation it is healing that is best for that man so jesus is willing to heal him yeah Yeah, I think it definitely is an encouragement to us to trust that Jesus is willing to help us. Um, And speaking of prayer, um, we're about to move on to a prayer activity. So we'll see you in a second for that. (laughs) Hi guys, we're back for our prayer activity. And the idea we had is that you can try and find some post-it notes 
um, we've got lots of different coloured ones here. If you don't have post-it notes, then I'm sure you can find some small pieces of paper and use tape or blue tack or whatever you like. Um, or if you've got a pin board, you can pin them up. Um, but we're using post-it notes because we thought that would be quite good. What we're going to do is we're going to create a prayer wall, um, which is kind of just a way of actually writing down the things that you want to pray for, putting them up on the wall, and then it means whenever you see them, it reminds you to be praying for those people or for those situations. Um, and it's also just a nice way of actually visually writing down your yeah. prayers, because I know sometimes for me it helps me to not get distracted if I'm actually writing down what I'm thinking. Yeah, okay. So um, we're going to take some post-it notes, we're going to write some prayer points, and we're going to put them on the wall. Um, and you can do the same thing at home as well. So it could be prayers for anything. I'm going to write down prayer for my grandma just because she's on her own currently in lockdown, which I think will be the case yeah. um, for lots of older people. Yeah, my grandma's on her own too. Yeah. But I think I'm going to write down Johnny because mm -hmm. we know he's going to be leaving Iford and I think we should pray for whatever's ahead for him. As you can see, we're just going to literally just post them up on the wall. Um, and that way you can just look at it and read it. We've tried to use some thicker pens as well, so that it's easy to see. Um, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write down a prayer for you, Cassie, seems as you're not able to go, down, go back home this Christmas. <laughs> I was also thinking that it's really important to actually thank God for the things that we do have in our prayer. Like we can thank him for our friends and family. Um, this week actually is Thanksgiving in the States, so it's important to remember that gratitude. Yeah. I'm also going to write one for the chefs at Morelands because they've been doing an amazing they job. So much food for us. <laughs> they have, and they were also wearing some really great Christmas outfits today. I love the elf. <laughs> the elf is great. It made us all smile. So yeah. I'm going to write a prayer for them. There we go. So that is our prayer wall. As you can see, we've written several prayers, and whenever we walk past, it will remind us to be praying again for the people who we've put up here or for the situations we've put there. Um, and if you have more prayers as the week goes on, you could add more post-it notes to the wall. That's the great thing about this is you won't really ever run out of space unless you really do have that many <laughs> prayers that you've covered a whole wall. Um, but yeah, just keep adding to it um, and and keep praying. It's such a valuable thing to be doing. And I think... If you do see some of your prayers answered, you can then take the post-it note off and yeah. replace it with a new one. Exactly. That's the great encouragement of this as well, is it reminds you what you've been praying for. Because I think sometimes we don't recognise when our prayers have been yeah. answered. I know I've had it before where I've had a diary and I've written down things I've prayed for in it. And then I've gone away and forgotten about it. And then ages later I've kind of read back through it and noticed how many of those prayers have been answered yeah. and so actually writing things down is really encouraging to show us what God's doing in our lives. So having said all that I think this is a good time for us to pray. <laughs> we'll pray for some of the things we put up there and also um, just for all of you at Anchors. Um, so yes let's pray. Lord um, we thank you for all of the children at Anchors. We pray that you will bless them all. Um, we pray that they can learn lots from this session. Um, and we pray that you will be close to them in their times of prayer, in their times of need. Lord Jesus, we pray um, that they will see you answering them. Um, Lord, I'd like to pray for my grandma and everyone who is currently on their own during lockdown and who does feel isolated and lonely. Lord, I pray that you'll be with her and all of these people, that you will um, be comfort to them, that you will give her 
um, peace and love and that she will just know that your presence is, is really strongly with her in this time. Um, we also pray for healing for all of those people who are weak and who are suffering. Lord, we pray that you will give them comfort, that you will give them strength and they will know that no matter what happens, you will be with them. Amen. Yeah, Lord, we really, we thank you for your healing power as it was demonstrated in the story that we read today. And we just really pray that your healing power will be shown in all those people who are ill at the moment. We pray that you will heal them if you are willing. And we do pray for Johnny, who will be moving on from Iford in a few weeks. We are so thankful for everything that he's done for us and with us, and we're going to miss him very much. But we pray that you'll really bless him in whatever he's going to do afterwards. And we also thank you for our friends and family. We're especially thinking about them now when we're going into the Christmas season and we expect to be with them for Christmas. And we pray for those who can't be with their families for this Christmas because of the COVID regulations. We pray that they won't be alone. We pray that they will still know that you are the God who is with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right, great. Thanks for joining us in this activity. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, and now we are going to move on to answering another question. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're back to do a, another question and answer um, video now. And we have some more questions. So we're going to pick out another one again. Um, let's pick one out and see what it says. It says, what does heaven look like? Ooh. Ooh. That's a good question. <laughs> it's good, and it's a very tricky question because, again, it's something where I can't say, well, I've been there, and this is what it's like. <laughs> <Why> not, <Lucy? laughs> no, so I really can only speak from what I've read in scripture yeah. and from what I've understood from other people who know a lot more than I do. Um, I think the first image that when I was much younger and Cassie I'm sure when you were younger yeah. as well have in our heads is the idea of heaven being this separate place up in the on sky a on a cloud perhaps like houses <laughs> on the cloud and yeah, yeah very bright you know um and obviously we know that's not the case because there are people who have gone in rockets up to space and they haven't crashed into heaven yet so yeah or even when you just fly an airplane and you're yeah. over the clouds yeah, no one's, no one's, as far as we know, landed in a cloud and found heaven. <laughs> um, actually, um, heaven is, is actually very different from that as far as what scripture tells us, um, because often the concept of heaven and what will actually happen after we die is described as entering a, a new creation. So in the same way as God, when he first created our earth, he made the land, he made the plants, he made the animals, he made us to govern over the land, um, and he made it, you know, a beautiful place. Yeah. And then when the serpent came and tempted Adam and Eve, there was the fall, sin entered the world, suffering entered the world, pain entered the world. And so actually, heaven is the new creation. It's, it's actually kind of like the earth we have now, yeah. but it's it's our earth redeemed so since jesus came it's it's kind of our earth but without the pain and without the suffering um, it, it says in revelation 21 verse 4 that there will be no more suffering or crying or pain um and so we don't actually have many descriptions of heaven to be mm -hmm. honest nothing which is very clear um but i think we have to remember that it isn't a separate place that we're going to travel to in the distance. Um, it's more that we will be transformed and the world around us will be transformed. I don't know whether you have any other thoughts on it. I think it's just going to be like the whole idea of new creation. Kind of, I think it kind of has to mean that it's going to be a more perfect version of the world as it is now because right now there are like so many things that you can think of where you're like oh this is just wrong with our world mm. but 
the new creation is going to be like that, but better and glorified and holy and perfect and like you said without sickness and crying and pain mm -hmm. yeah it's very much the idea of our world but a perfected version of our world yeah. because there are so many aspects of our world which do need improvement <laughs> there's there's big things and there's then, pollution there's climate change yeah and and those are really big things um there's even just the small elements of um tension within like yeah. our friendships and things like that like you know people have arguments and people get frustrated or get jealous and all of these things which cause rupture within our friendships and our relationships and make us feel bad ourselves and so even things like that will be perfected and we won't have that anymore and there'll be so much joy and and peace and we'll be in the presence of god which so, is just amazing <laughs> which is amazing we'll get to meet him face to face, know our creator um, and worship him for everything that he's done. Yeah. So I think that's the best description we can really give you of heaven. Um, we'd be really interested to hear if you have any more thoughts about it or want to tell us anything that you've envisaged when you think about heaven or if you've got any more questions based off what we've said. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think we're done. And we yeah, yeah, we'll just... I guess we'll see what it looks like when we get there. When we get there, there. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Post a note fell down. Um, well, we hope you've enjoyed this question and answer video and the rest of the teaching and the action song. Um, we've definitely enjoyed it. Um, we hope you guys have a really, really great week and we will see you next week with our next part of the Superhero series. So, have a great week. Yeah, have a great week. Bye-bye.